Legend of Total War here, and today I'm going to be rating one of your one-man doomstacks, this time covering Belakor. So, Belakor is currently within the northern provinces. Um, he's managed to get the ward save to its cap at 90%. It says 92%, but any, any number above 90% doesn't count. Uh, the cap is 90. And in case you're uh, not familiar with uh, the, uh, the end game of the Grand Campaign, I'll just explain it briefly. So there's going to be a few spoilers here, but hopefully you guys don't really care at this point. So Bellacor is the final boss of the race for the Demon Prince Souls, right? Once you've got four Demon Prince Souls, the final battle after that is a, a survival battle against Bellacor. If you win that battle... Your reward, regardless of which faction you're playing as, is always Belakor. So, if you're playing as Kislev, your reward is Belakor. If you're playing as Korn, your reward is Belakor. If you're playing as Cathay, your reward is Belakor. Now, personally, I think this reward absolutely sucks, but Cathay is the only one out of the races that participate in this uh, campaign that actually can make a really good one-man doomstack out of him, and it's largely just because of items. So, let's have a look at that and see how he's managed to achieve it. It's very similar to what we had with Zhao Ming. In fact, this one here is, I would say, perfected. Because uh, he got all of the right items. Whereas the Zhao Ming one that we did the other day, he was missing one or two items. So, um, he's got Slanesh's Blade. That's needed because you want to have the unbreakable attribute, especially with a demon. And uh, with somebody that's going to be a flying legendary lord. Uh, you've got the Trickster's Helm here, which is actually better than the Armor of Destiny because you get five melee defense here as opposed to uh, five extra physical resistance. Now, because he's at the ward save cap and he already has physical resistance, he's at his physical resistance cap, so getting him 5% extra is completely worthless. But melee defense, he is not at the melee defense cap, so that just reduces their chance to hit him by 5%, right? Just That's probably the best item to have on this. Then he's got the Talisman of Preservation, 17% ward save. Yep, that's the correct one. He's got the Bejeweled Dagger, that's the item that I was talking about. 25% ward save, passive ability, rebirth. Hopefully, we don't need the rebirth, but the 25% ward save is very good. And then he's got the Catalytic Kiln, uh, which is turning him into a um, Mortis Engine. And then, of course, he's got the Great Celestial Banner, which you get one of through the Tech Tree. Now, Bellacore, I think, has one of the worst and most uninteresting uh, skill lines in any legendary lord, in fact, in any character in Total War Warhammer. Uh, but he is a shadow caster, and shadow magic is quite powerful in Total Warhammer 3. We don't have a ton of reserves. It would have been good if we were at 100, but we'll see how we go with this. So we're going up against uh, Poxmakers of Nurgle, uh, a damaged army of uh, Seducers of Slanesh, another damaged army of Slanesh, and there's Nakari there, and a really small army of... Um, of corn, so three demons. It would have been fun. It would have been cool if like Sinch had participated in this as well, but that's fine. You know, let's jump in here and see how it works. Now, I personally really hate the campaign reward for um, winning the demon soul race. Don't get me wrong, I want to play as Bellacor for sure, but I think it really doesn't fit that it's the same reward for every faction, and I think that. Uh, Bellacor's implementation into the campaign is just awful. He doesn't even have a trait. His class is a legendary lord. He doesn't even have a trait. It's just whatever. Anyway, let's just uh, let's do this and see how we go. I have never managed to channel magic and actually it give me more magic. Every single time I've done it, it's always failed me, so I never do it. Not once has it worked for me. I feel like it's either bugged or rigged. Alright, so if we have a look at some of these, we'll have a look at his skill line after the battle as well. Uh, but if we have a look at some of this stuff here, Shadow Shroud is completely useless because he's already at his maximum cap. There's just no need to go to 132%. There's no need. Uh, the Dark Master, that is good. But that's just on that's just on one unit. So it's not that big of a deal. Uh, okay. Yeah. Got Arcane Conduit. We don't have Unlimited Winds of Magic. He would need the Jade Amulet Charge. equipped for that. Which would lose him ward save. I don't think it's worth equipping that and just using this because... Um, oh, yeah, which one was it? 
uh, this one because it's not active all the time. And it's much better to have uh, active all the time stuff. Okay, now we don't want them to kill their entire army with their with their own units. So I'm going to try to aim for the soul grinders first. Because otherwise they're just going to kill off their own units. And that's Bellicor's job here. So thanks to the Blade of Slanesh, she's absolutely kicking ass. Now he's also got another passive ability that as he gets more kills, similar to uh, Scarbrand, he'll get increased weapon strength. Making him very good against single entities. But we'll see how he goes against a big blob of garbage infantry. That's what we need the magic for. Good, one soul grinder down. I'm doing them a favor by taking that out early. All right, Slanesh's forces are here. There is utterly no point using this. It doesn't do a thing. <laughs> so yeah, if we have a look at, um, at this, where is it? Yeah, Blade of Shadows. We've currently got two percent, I'm not getting that many kills. All right, uh, time for open up a pendulum, because this is pretty overtuned at the moment. For 11 wins of magic can do a hell of a lot of damage, or 10 wins of magic with Pit of Shades. Um, if we have a look at how much damage that did, yeah. Actually, I'm not entirely sure, because um, I didn't check it beforehand. So, he's taking damage, he's not regenerating. He can regenerate, but he needs units to be wavering. And plus, we've got Nakari in here, we should probably try to focus him down. Alright, let's see how much damage this does. It's at 31,000. Yeah, so it did about 10,000 damage. It's, it's pretty good. Uh, let's put down a bit of shades. See if that does any better. It is actually cheaper. Could have sworn Penumbral Pendulum was cheaper than 11. Yeah, I'd say the Pit of Shades was actually better in this situation here. It, it did way more damage. And we want to get his kills up so that we can take out the single entities a lot quicker. Uh, problem is the amount of magic. But we're not taking much damage, we're also not regenerating. See, that's one of the, the great things about Xiao Ming, he's always regenerating. Of course, when Mortal Empires comes around, um, we can get Isabella's traits, but the thing is, in Mortal Empires, you may not be able to recruit um, Bellicor at all, because I don't think the main story mechanic is going to be part of the game. Whereas, Xiao Ming will just be able to, you know, play his regular campaign, but I, I just don't know about Bellicor. Uh, we could probably do this on Nakari, That wasn't Nakari, but whatever. Oh, there he is over there, taking a break. Alright, he's up to 39% extra weapon strength. And giving him extra melee attack. So this ability here. So it gives him power recharge rate. 2%. This <laughs> is fucking nothing. Here, let me have a look at that. And... Uh, uh, that's that's only um, at 20% intensity, so we can go up to 10%, right? And he's getting a little bit of a heal. Right, so the more units that are wavering, or lower, so if they're disintegrating, that they give it to him. The regeneration rate's pretty slow. Alright, you should have his cap now. Yeah, oh no, he's at 78%. He still needs more kills. Should 
really try to take out any of the high damage dealing units like Nakari. So yeah, 90% ward save is 90% uh, damage reduction against magical attacks now. In Warhammer 2, you used to be able to use um, magic resistance, but they removed that for weapons. Because it was... Uh, magic resistance was actually more powerful because it was really easy to get it. Uh, magic attacks were actually less powerful than physical attacks. So yeah, we are regenerating. We are regenerating. He's, he's getting there. And we've used up all of our winds of magic. So now he's got a wind impressive by hand. This is why it would have been good if we were at 100 winds of magic. Just to get rid of a lot of this shit in here. We've also got this. Uh, doesn't look like there's any more reinforcements to come in. If I pop them down, they're gonna just die instantly because of all the magic attacks, but whatever. Let's just do it. It'll speed things up a little bit. I'm not gonna pop it in the middle because, yeah, they'll just die instantly. I'll just try to charge it into the blob. Surprised they're sending everyone into the blob here. Let's get rid of Nikari. Okay, looks like we got rid of Nikari. Yeah. Okay, that's good. Because that's probably the highest damage dealing unit here. Alright, might as well just speed this up now, because there's a few Keeper of Secrets in there, but not that much of a concern. I'm actually regenerating. He does have really good melee defense. The Trickster's Helm was a good choice here. And these ones here aren't doing too badly. It'd be good if this was an area of effect ability. Doing it on single targets just isn't that useful. It's just not a powerful ability. It's alright if, it if he's in a duel with like one character, but that's not happening here. That's why I'm not really focusing on it that much. And giving him Foe Seeker is not really important, because he's got <laughs> he's, he's perfect vigor. It's fine, just do it. So, is that full health? I wonder if he'll reach his regen cap. Because he did take a fair bit of damage. Alright, Bounce Power is starting to push. We'll probably see the army losses get triggered fairly soon. Because we have killed most of the enemy forces. Although it says we've killed off more than 2,000, but he hasn't got the kills. It's probably just due to disintegration. I don't think they got too much friendly fire. I tried to make sure of that. But yeah, you pop down a Pit of Shades, it um, kills 50% of the units and then damages the rest of them, and then the rest is disintegrate. Kind of. Uh, not great if you're trying to get your kills up, but he's got his intensity up to 100%, so 1.5 thousand damage, 150 melee attack. He doesn't need to get much better. Yeah, just focus on the single entities there, that'll give us the army losses a lot sooner. Okay, I think Nurgle got the army losses, they're gone. Corn's out of here, I barely even saw Corn. Great 
Now, a thing to keep in mind about this particular battle here versus, um, well, comparing it to the Xiao Ming battle. Um, Xiao Ming didn't have the Bajul Dagger, and he went up against three armies of Cinch. Now, in my opinion, those three armies of Cinch were way stronger than the three, well, it's actually four armies that we went up against here. And uh, if Bellicor had gone up against uh, those uh, Sinchian armies, he would have taken a lot more damage because there were missile units, where there was no missile units here at all, apart from the Soul Grinders. You know, those horrors and... Um, how many bloody Soul Grinders there were? Would have done a fair bit of damage, and I imagine that he would have actually uh, hit his max regen cap on that battle. Just things to keep in mind. This is He's got all the items, and he's uh, going up against, in my opinion, a weaker yes. opponent. And that being said, it's kind of difficult to get like that many Sinchian armies all together at once. Surprised the army losses came in so late. Okay, so let's end the battle and um, have a look at his skill tree and see see what he's done with it. Although, he's got such a bland skill tree that he probably got everything that was good anyway. So yeah, it was, it was definitely a good matchup. I'm just saying that the, uh, the Sinchian one that we went up against the other day with Xiao Ming, that was tougher than this. Even if they had fewer armies. I mean, this was mostly just Nurglings. And blue and pink horrors are way more dangerous. Especially to a big demon. So yeah, we actually ended up in, with more health than uh, what we started. We must earn the second chance. Alright, um, whatever. We're not... He, he doesn't need to save our back. I don't need to worry about this. Alright, so let's have a look. Did he get... Yeah, he did. He got the Deep Cleaner. Did he also get the Bloody Trait? I don't think he did. Oh, no, he did. Wades through Gore. There it is. Yep, so he... Tick, tick. Good. Um, he can't get Meow Ying's Defeat Trait, <laughs> because he's playing as Meow Ying. Um, so he's, he's made him perfect, essentially. Alright, so let's have a look at what he's done here. Alright, all of the spells were obtained, which he didn't need to do, um, but that's fine. Um, yeah, like I said, Bellicor has got a garbage uh, skill line. He doesn't have a red line at all, which doesn't matter if you make him a one-man doomstack, uh, which is only really possible as Cathay. He does not have a personal trait at all, um, which I just feel like that's just lame. Um, yeah, doesn't need that. Doesn't need that. Yeah, Dark Master. Yeah, okay. Yeah. Those are his unique skills. I don't know. I don't know. It's not. It's just not that good. Um, like, that one's the best of them. And that's that's alright, I guess. Um, but yeah, he gets a magic line. He's got the personal melee line. And a blue line. Just kind of boring. And uh, yeah, look... He did perfectly with it, but just to be perfectly honest, if we had given uh, Miao Ying all of that equipment as well, um, she would have done just as better. Uh, she would have possibly done better because the uh, the Cathayan Dragon Lords they have two pools of regeneration, plus they have a small entity and a large entity. So if you're going up against a lot of missile units, you go into your small entity, like we did with Xiao Ming, and they just can't really hit you. And if you're going up against single entities or flying units, you go into your dragon form. Or you use your dragon form to get away and just regenerate. So that's way more useful. Whereas, while Bellacor's definitely a good fighter, don't get me wrong, 
Um, he doesn't have those uh, that utility. So it's it is definitely a good one man doom stack. It's only possible with Cathay. You wouldn't be able to do this with anyone else because only Cathay has uh, this banner and uh, the Bejeweled Dagger. And the, both of those combined is 45% extra ward save. Everybody else can get these three items. But yeah, to get the uh, get the extra 45%, um, you got to play as Cathay. And I don't think you can steal those items from Cathay either. I'm not sure if they get them when playing as the AI. So in terms of rating this, it's obviously very good. Um, is it as good as Xiao Ming? No, I don't think so. Um, is it as good as a Miao Ying one-man dim stack? No, I don't think so. Sorry, one-woman dim stack? I don't think so. It's slightly below that, because like I said, he doesn't have that utility. His abilities just aren't really that cool. Um, he is a good fighter. Shadow Magic's good, don't get me wrong. Um, but the Lore of Yin has got spells that can dish out pretty much just as much damage. Same thing with the Lore of Yang against uh, infantry, because that's the main thing you need it for, the magic, just to clear out big mobs of infantry if you're going to make one-man doom stacks. Otherwise, if you're going up against a single entity, you just you just kill them in a couple of hits because of the uh, Blade of Slanesh. Um, the ability extra armor piercing provided him with about 300 extra weapon strength, um, so it didn't really affect the, the weapon strength from the blade. It only affected his base weapon strength. See, if we took that off... Um, uh, yeah, he's got 444 base weapon strength, which is already augmented by a skill tree. So this one here, plus plus 100% of it, um, that's usually applied to the base, not the current. Otherwise, it would have been he would have been dishing out like nearly 2,000 damage, but that wasn't the case there. Um, so I got to give it a lower score than Zhao Ming, right? So I'm going to give it like a 9.5 because this one here is perfected. The other one wasn't perfected. That one was like a 9.5 with the potential of being a 10 out of 10. But this one is a 9.5 and it's met his full potential. So I really do appreciate the fact that he went through all the effort to get everything that he needed to do it, which was all of the items, uh, the deep cleaner and the, the gore wrenched trait. Uh, that really does help because, uh, you know, 15,000 health and gives you more regeneration because the... The, uh, the more max health you have, the more regeneration, because it's based off 75% of, uh, of your max health, uh, which is even more powerful with the dragons, because they, they get that twice. So they get 150% uh, health regeneration. And of course, because Xiao Ming can regenerate passively, um, that's actually more useful than having to rely on them being scared uh, before you can get it. And especially when dealing with demons, when they disintegrate really quickly. Anyway, that's the end of this one here, guys. Let me know in the comments below what you think of Bellacore specifically in his implementation of the campaign. I personally hate it. Um, I've got nothing else. Bellacore, I just think this is the lamest skill tree in existence. And he doesn't even have a trait. And it's just a lame reward. But I, I think he's a really good one-man doom stack, but only for Cathay. Uh, it's entirely up to you how you want to use him, though. Anyway, that's the end of this one. Appreciate you guys, and we'll see you next time, fuckers. I am Bye. The first. The only.